we will move to a q and a section in case the audience uh, you want to have the final for uh, concluding the speech from the utility side of you let me put up a consolidating points uh, as i said before net metering is fine but when a utility is purchasing high at peak the same cannot be used some measures have to be put in position what about differential pricing tod meters please understand that all the meters net meters now the utility is installing in the premises is tod meters first basic thing you have to understand so to convert to a tod billing differential pricing is not a additional infrastructure requirement about only a policy of regulatory affairs so if we go for such a type of differential pricing now the normal consumers not prosumers now also they are having about 20 kilowatt capacity 80 percentage price so uh, the, there is a difference in 120 percentage more they have to pay during the peak time 80 percent they only have to pay in the off time normal pricing due to that time please understand that now what net meters we are installing for the consumers about 20 kilowatt capacity we had already implemented variable differential pricing how much amount how much units of energy it is not on the amount but the unit of energy produced suppose a prosumer is producing 100 unit of energy during day time he can use only 80 units once about 20 kilowatt during the peak time from evening 6 to 10 he can use 120 units from the grid without any additional cost during the off peak time from the 10 pm to 6 am in the morning during day time he has he can use the same thing what is produced so if we implement that differential pricing system into the other prosumers also below 20 kilowatt what will be the impact we cannot implement we have to go to regulatory board there are there may be certain discussions within that since this net metering cannot be gone to according to so if such a things comes it is not like a gross billing or something like that it is somewhat similar to net billing not net metering and gross metering so how much you are producing of course there should be something because nobody can uh, go on assets what it, what it, what at all it is coming it will be coming like this you produce this much energy this much percentage that will be set by the government regulators as well as the different states that much percentage you can use it it can be 90% 80% it can be less as well i think that is also fair enough let him produce how many how many units he need without any restrictions let us promote this green energy everything let us reduce the carbon emission and all but when it come to the pricing the utility also need a support from all the stakes plus the consumers the burden must be shared equally if 100% prosumers consumers are prosumers no need of this, uh, this types of things among the different various sectors of the consumers it is not like that certain people are getting benefit of the subsidy scheme because of their wealth all the government is all all the utilities like acb under the umbrella of the government has to think of measures for the common public our minister and all you might have seen everywhere whenever we are taking a decision we must take a decision such a way that the most underprived community of the society must be benefited you can see the same sentence everywhere that is the policy so differential pricing has to have to think about to cover this issue now the, the purchase obligation has gone but another obligation has come 2022 23 itself storage obligation regulate uh, the state board has to meet one percentage we have already started the measures to implement utility state solar project 220 kv substation mile up we had already made all the schemes tendered or is about to start it is a 10 megawatt project/20 megawatt hour 
to always be starting to do it as a pilot project we had all the starter if we are not able to complete by 2023 march as per this storage obligation we have to pay for that so here there is a shift of purchase obligation from the solar installation or wind whatever it is during the day time to the peak time so this is a transition nobody is going to escape nobody is going to what we call gain anything from that so we have to think about a system with solar with the battery backup it is called battery energy storage systems gradually it has to go through or else we have to pay so i am 100% sure that hybrid systems will come into the picture we have to force the consumers or to change the regulations as well as the mnre team to promote hybrid inverters which even supply is not there they will use it whenever something is there they have to use a battery storage and revamp it or use it in the peak time so that our purchase obligation in the energy storage can be met accordingly four percentage as like we discussed by mr terence by 2020 third 2023 no, no, is one percentage four percent by 2027 so this is the real facts which i am putting black and white just to apprise the public thank you thank you sir that's a good suggestion so definitely there is a hope for the uh, hybrid systems in the coming future so now it's open to the audience to ask any questions We have discussed a lot about uh, storage. The KSCB, you have a good opportunity to have pumped storage. It's a pity that we are not caught on those lines because all the dams you can put uh, floating solar and use that energy to pump the water up, and then use that water during the peak time. This is a tremendous opportunity, and uh, I think ACB should actively look at it and have at least some pilot project. Like I did the first pilot project of the 500 kilowatt uh, floating solar in the country. Similarly, using the same concept, you should have pumped storage, and that will be the solution. Because today the battery storage. you know and a commercial scale is too costly so this is a good opportunity in kerala particularly because there are a lot of dams where this can be implemented i think uh, that's a very good suggestion and i'm sorry to intervene but i think you know solar plus wind and if you combine hydro uh, pump storage as suggested by sir that makes a very very good case and very easy to get uh, you know round the clock renewables combining it with hydro few of the states are already doing that i uh, uh, we all know like let's say for example maharashtra or certain states are doing that and supplying 100% renewable energy uh, to commercial industrial entities let's say uh, classic case of uh, bombay international airport i was talking to sustainability head of bombay international airport and he was saying that anand we are buying 100% green power for this stack that this airport is totally green powered uh, from the state electricity board we are paying like uh, around 15 crore rupees every year additional to the state government to the state electricity board but we are fine for that tag so very good suggestions by sir uh, on this note and if uh, anybody in the panel would like to take part yes uh, actually the man who has asked the question uh, has got all the mandate to ask such a question <laughs> fortunately or unfortunately what i i what i learned from the system scenario at present is that suggestion is fine uh, going for a pump storage is absolutely fine and good in all way it is good but what is the economic viability we have to arrive upon so electricity board has made certain studies and we have put up certain calculations some excel sheets and all and found that the power which is needed to pump back is coming little bit for the high pump Two hundred percent is this is a statement which we can I do endorse from utility point of view. Now any projects which we are putting up 
or utilities A. We have a commercial wing as well. As well. So, the, see, you all are developers sitting in the company. We have no hidden parts in any of the tentative at all. When we are going up with certain tenders, that is the storage systems, it's floating solar, PM Kusum schemes, whatever it is, the rate which we are arriving is more or less 3.5 to 4 years, perhaps more than that. When we are going this papers among the not only regulators, even the commercial team inside our electricity board, what is happening? You know, they are asking, dear, Seki is giving you for a 2.37 per unit. You can get from Seki. When you have an option to get 2.37 from Seki and all, why you need to invest per unit for in such cases that you don't want? Will not the public money? Can anybody answer this question? Can anybody support you to give that answer? Can you say? Having said so, even the floating solar as 100% agree endorsed the gentleman. The cost is almost same, more or less same we can say. When some aspect is more, some aspect is less here, but it is being compensated. It is being compensated here. But the, the, the cost of this floating as well now, or the even other utility scale, PM it is not other floating, is coming up to that scale. What we can do? We have all the initiatives to install our targets and this one. But when it is coming to the commercial point of view, the commercial viability, when you study, it cannot be matched up with the present energy, solar, the, the energy which is available in the market. When floating solar is having so, and floating can be generated, and again that energy can be used to pump it back, another drawback is that we cannot just go on adding this into the grid. Why, you know, system stability is also a major issue. Now, I think another session, if I get time, I will explain virtual net metering concept is there. MNRE has already declared through that virtual net metering we have to think in such a way that if it is floating, whatever it is, virtual net metering concept has to be implemented. That has to be taken through to address such issues that can be discussed. It's a separate topic. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think now we are short of time and all these questions maybe can be taken offline. We are having a 15 minute tea coffee break. So, uh, on behalf of audience and as organizer, we'd like to thank the session for a very, very insightful uh, first session. Uh, to add to the stream of thoughts that I was presenting in the morning, uh, you know, uh, one often uh, challenge that we have seen is that in uh, increasing the share of renewables, uh, we often face uh, resistance from discoms and state regulators and all. So, I think uh, this is my personal view and opinion that this massive drive towards decarbonization and net zero and even like corporates who have pledged uh, their RE100 initiative uh, is also going to like kind of create a massive push on state governments and state electricity boards to, uh, you know, <clears throat> allow more and more integration of renewables in their power generation mix, you know. Uh, because if their ecosystem is really demanding that, they have to do it. And if that state is not going to, you know, help be helpful uh, in this, uh, probably those plants would eventually shift from that state. Probably, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, so uh, I think, uh, you know, all the barriers that we have known till now also are going to kind of slightly fade away as this drive towards decarbonization and net zero kind of uh, propels and intensifies. So just additional uh, food for thought for everyone. So uh, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you all have been like really wonderful audience. And I'll request Mr. Nosha to please give away the mementos on behalf of organizers to all the panelists on the stage, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you.